I am here with the Creality Falcon A1. It's one of their newer lasers. Um, this thing is nice and compact. It feels very heavy, the box does, which tells me it's probably pretty good build quality. But let's go ahead and get it out of the box and take a look at it. So right out of the gate, I am very impressed with the packing. You had this nice thick piece of cardboard, which would be good to kind of use in the laser. Um, nice thick piece of foam over the top. You have a decent amount of foam on either side protecting it. There's foam inside, foam under the bottom. So let me get all this out and yeah, we'll take a look at it on the table. So I got everything out. It does come with a piece of wood to test. Just looks like one. You get the camera calibration thing. Um, and you've got your power cable, air assist, same air assist everyone uses. Uh, external power and then, you know, the air assist hose and all that stuff. You don't get a honeycomb. Um, kind of wish honeycombs were standard instead of something you had to buy. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm not sure what the, the dimensions are here, but I'm sure you can find one on like Amazon or whatever. The laser head is really small. Normally they're quite a bit bigger. It's kind of nice. Makes it a little bit more compact and everything. You do have this diagrammed uh, work surface that does raise up a little. That's painted on there, so it's probably going to you know, kind of wear off and stuff. They do have their own software. It's still beta right now, but it's called Falcon Design Studio and it sees the A1. Uh, getting this set up on Lightburn was super easy. It automatically detected the controller. It automatically knew the um, dimensions. Everything was in the correct position. You know, I put a, a little thing in one corner and then in another corner and had it outline them and it did it all right. So it knew all that. Easy to do with Lightburn. And I'm just now here with the Falcon Design Studio. It did take me a minute to go find it. It's walking me through how to set everything up. I'm sure it's great. I'm just not gonna mess with it right now. I'm gonna mess with Lightburn. Lightburn's what I know. It's what I would use anyway. But if you're new, I imagine by the time this comes out, it will be. So I've got their Falcon um, Design Studio thing up here and it immediately saw the laser, all that. You saw that. Um, it is connected. I did <clears throat> disconnect the air assist real quick just so I could record. I'll plug that back in before we start. This is a file that was just there in their little, you know, like uh, homepage thing inside the app. And we're just gonna go ahead and try it. I will go ahead and get the uh, laser thing out, the height thing and, and set the height real quick. But then we're just gonna do this. So yeah, let me do the height thing real quick and get this plastic off and we'll check it out. All right, so I've got that um, at the right height. The software needs a lot of work. Piece of wood in here. I'm just gonna line it up to their grid, I guess. And let's go ahead and frame this. So you can't just press frame, you have to have to press frame and start. And is it because the lid's open? Usually you can frame with lids open. Okay. So I told it to frame and it's just going straight into trying to cut. Their software at the time of recording needs some work. That's okay. We'll go ahead and go into Lightburn. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and do a material test with Lightburn. So I will say this definitely has some sort of magnetic sensor too, because see that light? It completely shuts everything down when you open it. So that is not a pass through. I apologize for calling it a pass through earlier. Totally thought that was gonna be a pass through. It's a shame that those magnets are there and make it so you can't use it as a pass-through. We're just going to do a 10 by 10. And there she's off to the races. So that should be the strongest and it's not doing anything. Uh, I'll come back and see if anything's happening. So I went ahead and canceled the test and I'm doing settings that I know work for other 10 watt lasers. I'm just doing a square with a circle. Um, I'm cutting out one and then filling the other just to save some time here. It seems to be working pretty well. Um, it might seem a little overpowered so we might need to dial it down a bit, but oh, it could be because I didn't plug the air assist back in. So we'll try it again next to it. But the air assist is kind of just annoying. It's just always on. Also, let me let me just talk about how I hate this. They put the plastic on and then put the handle on. So you have to cut around. I, other laser companies have done this. There are also ones that don't do that though. Um, 
that actually cut the plastic out themselves before applying it and then put the handle on. So I just, I don't like that. So I either have to come in here and take this handle off or yeah, just, just sort of annoying, but yeah, it, it's doing much better with the air assist. So that was entirely on me. I will say it is not exhausting smoke hardly at all. It's got like a really small computer fan on there. So you would want to like use something like that inline fan I have over there if you really wanted to move it a distance. Let's go ahead and open this door and try to get this out. Definitely much better with the air assist, so that was on me. Let's check the back, it's hard to do one-handed. Yeah, the top there is without the air assist. So I'm still going a little bit hot there with a, a known setting for 10 watt lasers, but that's the thing with these diodes and stuff. Every diode's different, even in the same machines. So you'll, you know, you'll experiment a little, move it a percent or two. Um, We'll get that out of the way real fast. We'll open this up. Yeah, I mean, again, it overburned a lot. It's probably a millimeter down in there in a known good setting. So let's go and put the wood in and we'll try this again. And here's where I don't like that there's no honeycomb. That's getting sticky already, if it focus. So, and it's already etching into the material. So you really need a honeycomb with this. Um, I don't know that you're actually gonna have room to put one in here. They, they didn't give you a whole lot of, of room to work with. So that means I'm gonna have to come in here with like isopropyl alcohol and clean this every time. Otherwise, any material I put in here, say I put a new piece there and it's up in here, that's gonna transfer that stuff to the back. So uh, one way you could help mitigate that is you could put masking tape on the, uh, or painter's tape on the bottom side of your new project so it doesn't transfer the sticky, but It'd be nice if this uh, came with a honeycomb or seemed to have more room for a honeycomb. If I put a honeycomb in here right now, I'm only gonna have a little bit of room. It might go up an inch, but anyway, let's move this over and try a little weaker. What? what? Oh, sorry, the guard there. Did it completely stop my, yep. It completely aborted because I had the door open. It's home it again. I like, that should be a pass-through. I'm sorry, but that needs to be a pass-through. I understand the safety. They could throw in a pair of glasses and that problem would be solved and then you could have something functional. Um, that really kind of bothers me. So I doubled the speed on the fill. So hopefully we get a little bit better. It was at 35 uh, millimeters a second. I made it 70. It's still throwing a ton of of soot off to the side, just like it did on these ones, even at that speed. Um, that's just not good. I tested another laser yesterday and it left none of that doing similar stuff. And I, you know, uh, same thing's going on here. Since you don't have a honeycomb, all this smoke's just coating the whole underside of this wood, which means so much more smell of smoke is going to be in your project. So you really need something to raise that up. Just. I don't know, poor design. Um, I've used Creality stuff before with one of their open frames and I was pretty happy with it. Um, for an open frame, it, it was all right. But this thing, like, I don't know if this is their first attempt at something like this, but I am not very impressed. Yeah, see, that's actually worse than these ones over here. I increased the speed and it made it, made it much worse but you're also not getting all the browning and stuff. I don't know. I don't know, guys. Let me try something a little bit bigger and then we'll be back. So I'm doing some name tags here and immediately, I, I again, I lowered the speed 10, uh, I had left the speed at 70 millimeters a second this time and I reduced the power 10% from 50 to 40 and I'm already seeing a bunch of the smoke around. These are settings I've used on another 10 watt laser and then they're 10 watt diode, so I mean, they should be pretty close and like, I'm nowhere near close right now. So yeah. And yes, that says craftsman without a T as in the YouTuber, the craftsman, he's a little brown sock puppet gay. And then I was going to do, hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl and my other brother, Daryl. But uh, I did Larry and craftsman. These are going to be like little name tags. I also changed the speed. Oh, I'm sorry. I changed the power just a hair on the cut. The cut is looking a lot better. So you're gonna be able to get the line engraved um, there. It's just, it, it seems pretty inconsistent with my experience with 10 watt lasers, which might mean this laser is actually just a little bit overpowered, the specific diode. Uh, again, your mileage may vary. 
these things, you know, they're not set in stone concrete. You see that especially with like CO2 lasers and fiber lasers. Um, I've never experienced a whole lot of drift with the diodes, but it does happen. So that's not a fault of the product. Um, yeah. I just, I don't like that there's not a honeycomb, man. Every laser should just come with a honeycomb now. Work it into the price. Also, I think I'm still going way too uh, powerful. I'm generating a whole lot of smoke out of this. So, you know, if you're seeing results like I am, definitely dial it down some. Yeah, look, there's smoke just trapped under there. Okay, so that actually wasn't enough to cut through that time. It is not happy that I opened that lid. All right, let's try it again. All I changed this time was the cut. We could always dial the text in if I was gonna use this for something, but it's like 40 degrees outside and I have Crocs on because I'm a genius. My toes are getting pretty numb. I'd like to go inside. I, I know I've complained a lot about this laser, but it is really nice. This is super sturdy. Uh, like that is some legit metal. Th this is the most robust one I've had to date that wasn't like a fiber laser. Like this thing's a tank, man. The plastic is nice. I love just the visual look of it. It's got the camera. My, my only real complaints are is you can't use this as a pass-through because it's got those magnetic sensors that the magnets tell you that it's closed. So, and you know, it, it clearly says no uh, magnetic objects allowed nearby because that would defeat that safety feature. And I don't like that it uses one of these deals. If you're gonna do something like this, at least use the little pop-down probe thing. Um, autofocus would have been nice. I don't know how much more that costs the manufacturer, but like all of these things should just have manual focus. Now, if you're gonna have a camera, sorry, autofocus, if you're gonna have a camera, you should really have autofocus. Like, what are we doing? It's just weird to me that you wouldn't include that feature. It, it's, it's becoming standard. And then the fact that you can't use that as a pass-through, which I said, that, and then just a honeycomb, like, Throw in a cheap honeycomb. Just give your customer the best experience right out of the gate instead of whatever this is. So yeah, that definitely cut through that time. Let's wait till it fully comes to a stop so it doesn't get angry. Yeah, food focus. So yeah, um, I just need to dial in the text and this works pretty good. That actually, there's very minimal smoke around the edge. So we're starting to get there with the cutting. Again, you could do the same with the uh, engraving and the fill but yeah overall pretty happy with this if you just want something pretty simple um, it's nice and compact doesn't take up a whole lot of space it's got a decent footprint both physically and for the working area and the only thing i would do is maybe get yourself an inline fan run the tubing that they have and then put that inline fan at the end of that and then you could like run it outside um, that's what i do when i put lasers here i just duct it out around the corner and then shut the garage door to about there and it keeps all the smoke out of the garage. If you're using this inside, it is very nice air seal. You do have a nice rubber gasket here. Same thing on the front door. So you could run that right out a window, um, you know, just cut a little piece of wood. You could probably do it right in here. Put the little adapter on or whatever and pump the smoke outside. Again, you could also always hook it up to one of these kind of deals and capture the smoke and, you know, put it into a filter instead of out in the air. But yeah, that's it. Um, not sure I would personally buy this one, but if you just want something simple, you're doing little crafts for your kids, for Cub Scouts, for church, whatever. Yeah, probably a pretty good buy. Um, I, I don't actually know the price point yet when I'm recording this, so that will remain to be seen. But if this is on the lower end, like definitely I would buy it. It's on the higher end, you probably get something that has more features for a similar price. Thanks for stopping by. Let me know in the comments if um, you use one of these in the future or if you've used something similar and what kind of projects did you do with this? See you guys.